It's really, uh, really an honor to be here uh, to talk to you about the era of deep learning. You know, the idea of AI was first envisioned slightly under a thousand years by a Spanish philosopher called Roman Lull. He imagined the idea that something other than human beings could reason. A little less than 100 years ago, the church the Turing thesis was written, which formalized the notion of reasoning by machines. 25 years ago, Microsoft started investing in artificial intelligence with the formation of Microsoft Research. So there's been a lot of work going on in artificial intelligence, but st something has changed. In fact, we are going through a inflection in artificial intelligence thanks to deep learning. And we are starting to see some very, very important benchmarks falling. For example, a year ago, Microsoft Research surpassed human ability to recognize objects. And this was done really with deep learning. In fact, it was done with a form of deep learning which was modified by Microsoft Research called deep residual learning with 152 layers of reasoning with neurons. Similarly, six months ago, Microsoft Research surpassed human speech recognition goals. This was also done with deep learning. Now, anybody who's worked in artificial intelligence for many, many, many years, for tens of years, has been trying to work towards a goal that you can match human ability. So what I'm telling you is that for vision, or the ability to see, and the ability to hear, we have already exceeded human ability in the last year itself. But very importantly, we also exceeded a very important ability, Pac-Man. Okay. Pac-Man, no human had beaten the game. Three weeks ago, my team beat Pac-Man in fact, if you see the score, you probably noticed it counted all the way up and rolled back. That score, even people who wrote the game had never seen in their life. For the first time, with deep learning, with 100 parallel agents working, they were able to beat Pac-Man with something called hybrid reinforcement learning or collaborative reinforcement learning. So what we are really seeing here is a very, very important moment which is gonna change our lives forever. The question then is, why now? Masa talked about the revolution. Well, what's happening is, this is the fourth industrial revolution that we are going through and that we are very fortunate to actually see in front of our eyes. The first industrial revolution was mechanical with machines. The next, next um, uh, industrial revolution was really with electricity. The third was with computers. And now we have the AI-based industrial revolution. So the question is, why now? Well, we believe that three things have happened which are causing this industrial revolution to happen. Number one is big data. The fact that a lot of data is available in a form that can be processed is a huge driver of this. Another thing which has happened is that compute power has really, really increased. I'll talk more about that. And also, we believe that deep learning is the big inflection that is really gonna drive AI everywhere uh, that you and I know. So it is truly an amazing moment. You know, we are very fortunate uh, in our lifetimes to see computers happen, smartphones happen, 
Now we're gonna watch AI happen, which is gonna change everything. Microsoft has a very deep commitment to AI. The AI and research division, uh, which I work on, has more than 5,000 engineers working on AI. We have more than 1,000 engineers in research, many of them who work on artificial intelligence. And we are really focused on three pillars on how to bring artificial intelligence to the world. Those three pillars are building an AI platform, infusing AI into Microsoft products like Microsoft Office, and then building business solutions with deep learning. Now, in terms of the AI platform, our goal is to democratize artificial intelligence, which means we want millions of developers to use our platforms to create AI experiences, AI applications. Uh, this is very consistent with Microsoft's platform uh, lineage, our legacy, our history, and we want to continue that with AI. And we're investing a lot in that. For example, with cognitive services, we are bringing deep learning in computer vision, language understanding, speech, search, and knowledge. So all the research that we're doing with deep learning, we are enabling developers to really build applications on it. As of the last count, there are more than 630,000 developers who now are writing applications on top of cognitive services. We are improving the models for all these capabilities and we are adding new capabilities to cognitive services. The other thing we are doing is we are really building an AI supercomputer in the cloud. With Azure that is available globally, we are now putting in custom architecture or special computer architecture to support deep learning with FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays. We already have GPUs. In fact, FPGAs are so powerful that you can take War and Peace and that entire book of 1,440 pages can be translated from Russian to English in two and a half seconds. So our goal basically is that if you are a developer or you are a business and you want to bring very, very powerful AI capability, you should be able to tap into this global cloud we have which has the AI building blocks and that you can use and you can really improve your business on top of that. Based on this capability, we are seeing applications in healthcare, we're seeing applications in finance, we are seeing government applications already starting to happen. There's lots of interesting uses where AI is starting to transform a lot of things. The other thing that is very, very important is that Microsoft has some graphs of data. Now data by itself is data which is structured. But when you can understand what that data is, it becomes a very, very powerful building block for AI. So there are three big data graphs that Microsoft has. The office graph, a billion people in the world use Microsoft Office. We have created a graph of data within the tenant of the business so that it can be done in a secure way for that business. With LinkedIn, we have a professional social graph. That means we know skills, we know people, we know companies. And with Bing, we have a knowledge graph a knowledge graph of people, places, and things. So we actually understand the data semantically so we can reason over it. In fact, what we are building is a graph of graphs. So these three graphs are actually interconnected into each other to form even a higher level graph, which becomes super important from artificial intelligence perspective. Another thing we are doing is really taking AI and making it part of our products. I mentioned earlier, we have one billion users 
more than a billion users who use Microsoft Office. We are making sure that lots of the experiences and applications in Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, they are becoming intelligent. And by doing that, we are really bringing intelligence and efficiency to uh, a lot of people. Similarly, we added translator capability to Skype. We, um, three years ago, I got up on stage and demonstrated for the first time in the world where I'm talking English and the other person is talking German in real time. In three years, we've added 10 languages to Skype translator, which means we can translate 10 times 10, 100 minus the diagonal, 10. So 90 different combinations of translation is now being done with deep learning as part of Skype translator, which has completely shattered the constraint that humans have had with language. Again, surpassing you know, human ability uh, from, for translation. We are making Windows a lot smarter. I don't ever type in a password to my Windows machine, uh, and I'm still able to get to it securely with hello, where to recognize my face. Uh, we're making Xbox faster, we're making browsing faster, we're bringing all these AI capabilities to our applications to make them intelligent. Now, rather than me talk more about that, I would like to invite up the CTO of Microsoft Japan to come up, Akira, please come and join me and uh, show us some AI capability with, uh, with Office. Thank you. As Gadeep just mentioned, we are infusing AI into various products and services of Microsoft going forward. Last year, I took the stage and I talked about uh, the beta version of the Skype translator and I demonstrated it on stage. Now, today, I'd like to talk about incorporating Skype into PowerPoint. So, uh, can you switch the screen? Thank you. So, on Skype, Skype uh, we can introduce a translator plugin, and when you do that, then you open the slideshow menu, then you, there's a button called the Start the Subtitle or Translate the Slide. These are two different menus, and uh, slide translation is very difficult. You know, when you want to explain uh, to a non-Japanese person, you have to translate from Japanese into English or German or French. Uh, that's cumbersome, but it's not going to be cumbersome anymore. Look at this. Uh, I click translate slide, then uh, it'll ask you, what language is the slide in? Is in Japanese. Uh, to what language do you want to translate into? Well, let's say I will choose Arabic. Arabic. Okay, translate. So I will uh, store the file in Arabic, then it will translate into Arabic and will open the file for me. It was just, uh, it took just one second. So let's look at others. So I'll open the original file, and then I will click uh, translate the slide, and then let's choose a language. Okay, Korean. So let's translate into Korean. And I'll save the Korean version. Come on. Got it. Instantaneous. I don't know if the translation is correct, as I can't attest for the accuracy of the translation. <laughs> So, so uh, you know, so let's uh, choose English because then you'll be able to see the quality of the translation. So let's do English. Here we go. Yes, it's translated quite accurately. Uh, and it's uh, personal translation and expected usage mode. You know, these are all correct English translations of the Japanese original. Uh, so this will translate instantaneously, which means that uh, you don't have to prepare uh, documents in different languages anymore in paper form. It's going to be very, very, it's going to make your lives very easier. And another menu is to start the subtitle. What does that mean? Subtitles, these are captions, subtitles. You start the subtitle, and while you are 
making the presentation, and then your words can be shown on the screen as subtitles as you speak. So let me do this. I have another guest today, one employee, uh, um, Jo-san, or Shu-san, Shu-san, who is also an employee of Microsoft. Uh, so I am going to make a presentation with subtitles. And uh, there's a smartphone application for machine learning. It's called the Microsoft Translator. And it also su supports iOS and Android and Windows, of course. And so today, I would like to use two iPhones for translation. One is into English and then uh, to Chinese and then Japanese. Uh, so I click start the subtitle and it asks you what language are you speaking in? I'll be speaking in Japanese, of course. So I will say Japanese and translate into English. The subtitles will be in English. So when I do that, uh, so this screen will come up and then you will read in this barcode and you decide which language you want to participate in. Oh, this is a demonstration, so don't do it. So those be people online, listening online, don't do this, OK? Don't join. This is a demo, so don't join. OK, so I, I joined. Now, the screen on your left would be English. You can't get in. The right-hand side, I think, should be Chinese. You can't get into the English. Are you in? Oh, oh so it's the Chinese version you can't get into? I think you were in a different code. So you have to first go into translator, and then in conversation, enter, and then take a photo. You're in. <laughs> Are you in? Ooh. Can't access the internet. <laughs> Okay, let's use 4G. Okay, she's in. So Chinese is, I think, to your left, and English should be to the right, I think. So let's have a conversation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, how are you? Now, we will use PowerPoint to make presentations in the different languages. We will use three different languages, English, Chinese, and Japanese. Let's start. Gadeep, what is Microsoft's mission? Microsoft's mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to do more. We have used machine learning in all kinds of products to make it easier to use machine learning. The Microsoft Translator is one such means. You can communicate in your own native tongue. That's wonderful. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, that's it. Thank you very much for supporting us and for helping out. So, this uses uh, voice recognition and neural net 
for learning the translation. And by combining these two AI uh, technologies, this feature was made possible. So I'd like to show you another example, which is a video indexer. Video indexer recognizes the video and for each frame, what kind of conversation is being made and it will recognize the voice and speech and then put the index on that. So listen to the conversation, what kind of uh, emotions, what kind of sentiments, are they using positive or negative? So that is the analytics. What are the keywords? They will extract the keywords. So that's a bit video indexer. So uh, the conversation which I have had uh, has been uploaded. So let's play that conversation. So video indexer says me, you know, talking. Uh, the video indexer recognized me. So this is something which I just talked about, and it's being recognized. This is a transcript. So using the voice recognition, speech recognition, it will be transcribed into text. So let's skip. Since this is indexed, so whenever I click, it will jump onto that specific location. But uh, it, it will scroll down, so anywhere you can skip or jump into. Um, I think I'm not really good. Uh, I don't really show a good face, so maybe I should skip. Well, maybe, you know, it was really a short speech, but if we have a longer speech, keywords can be translated. Uh, extracted. So translator, AI, and agiles, those will be extracted underneath of index. So let's say where AI was mentioned, and I could jump onto the specific location. And also those extracted keyword are meta tag. So using that tag, you can combine with a different application so that using that keyword, you can do something else. Other great feature about this uh, video indexer is those extracted keywords and also the trigger of the conversations can be used to build the workflow. So let's say uh, maybe having a certain trigger in the video, it will uh, start the certain uh, workflow, maybe sending emails, maybe trying to send the alerts, or maybe trying to uh, bring a certain functions. So that's something which we are releasing as a video, a video indexer. I hope that you enjoy that video indexer. So lastly, let me talk about the bot, chatbot. Microsoft chatbot is something which we have been focusing on. So on Windows, you have Cortana. That's the agent who has the bot functions. And Cortana is also offered by Microsoft. Cortana is the agent trying to improve the productivity of your work. So let's say if I want to go to travel, go on a trip. Well, this is a schedule which you can put the business trip. But rather, maybe I want Cortana or someone else to ask, you know, what happens? Why would you like to go to the travel? So uh, let me uh, introduce the other type of bot, which is Rina, which is a junior, oh, sorry, a girl, high school girl. Even though it's bot, but uh, based upon the design, uh, this is not the bot which is based upon the designed conversation, but rather Rina is looking at all the data which you, you searched or you have had, and based upon those learning, Rina can bring the conversation with you. So Rina already has obtained over 5 million friends online and also including the followers of the Twitter, 5.7 million people are having conversation with Rina. Since uh, it's a um, high school girl, so she's frank and easy to understand. 
Rina has friends. So can we bring Rina's friends? So this is Akiko Lawson crew. So Lawson, the convenience store, using Rina technology, and he, she will be talking about the different products, or maybe she will introduce the stores. So this is a Lawson crew Akiko. Akiko is a little bit older than Rinna, and Akiko is working at Loson, the convenience store. Recently, Rinna has another friend, male friend, uh, who is a little bit arrogant, bossy, Dingo. So I'm sure that you may wonder what Microsoft is doing. Well, so uh, that Dingo is kind of arrogant, bossy, to Rina. So let me introduce those Rina's friends. First, let me introduce Akiko. Yes. So when we, Rina has conversation with Akiko, let's say we already have conversation. So I said, you know, we have a lot of audience today, a huge audience. So I say uh, it's a great number of the audience. And then Akiko says, well, yes. And I said, OK, I'm hungry. Then Akiko said, why not to eat the donuts? Maybe you should uh, try the donuts. How about donuts? Yes, it's easy to get donuts. Then she goes, what? And I, I say one more time, yes, it's kind of easy and a quick bite of donuts. And then she goes, yes. And I ask, what would be the delicious donuts? And she says, yes, I'm looking forward to it. That's a little bit awkward conversation. So now let's show the conversation with Dingo. So Dingo as well. No, I already had a conversation with him, so let's purchase lunch at Lawson. Well, yes. Did you say uh, you want to uh, have lunch? And uh, yes, uh, he, he actually says, are you bossing me? Why not? I go and get it. So uh, depending on your emotions or sentiments, uh, you can have the different conversation in different styles, not just trying to improve the productivity of your work, but uh, you can see the emotional aspect of AI. So that's all from myself. So Gadeep Sam, please. Thank you, Akira. Thank you. One of the principles that we are using is that the platform that we use for AI in our own products is something that we are opening for developers as well. So as we are making advancement in natural language understanding, in computer vision, in speech recognition, uh, we are making that part of the API. And there's just so much work going on there. Now, in addition to infusing AI and the AI platform, we're also working on solving some very, very hard business problems with deep learning. That's an area I will want to talk to you more about in a bit, uh, when I perhaps come back next time. Um, but this is an area where everything from how you think about customer support, how you think about sales and marketing, all that can be fundamentally transformed with deep learning. Now, the smartphone, if you use the iPhone as a marker for the smartphone era, is really only 10 years old. And in 10 years, everything in our life has pretty much been changed by the smartphone. How we eat, 